JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 20th. I am Harala Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It lost the most ground against uh, NOC, GBP, SEC and NZD in that order, while it lost the least ground against the Canadian dollar. Now, the weakening of the greenback and the relative strength of the risk-linked Kiwi suggest that markets uh, traded uh, in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, looking at the performance in the equity world, we see that this wasn't the case. Most uh, major EU and US indices closed in negative territory, with the only exceptions being the French uh, CAC 40 and Spain's IBEX uh, 35, which rose 0.15 and 1.14% respectively. Market sentiment improved uh, somewhat during the Asian trading today. Although Japan's Nikkei 225 uh, fell 1.96%, China Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong Hang Seng traded uh, virtually unchanged, while South Korea's KOSPI gained 0.66%. It seems that investors uh, remained cautious uh, due to earnings results by major firms, uh, with uh, tech stocks uh, taking the biggest, um, the biggest hit after a Tesla vehicle uh, believed to be operating with no driver, uh, crashed into a tree on Saturday, killing two occupants. Today, eyes may be on earnings results by Johnson & Johnson as well as uh, by Netflix. Corporate outlooks may indicate whether the rally from last year uh, could uh, continue. Uh, in our view, with, uh, with most major central banks uh, suggesting that uh, any spikes in inflation this year are likely to prove to be temporary and staying committed to keep their monetary policies, their monetary policies extra loose. We believe that even if the earnings disappoint somewhat, there is a decent chance for equities to rebound again and continue trending north. We stick to our guns that other risk-linked assets like the Aussie and the Kiwi may benefit as well, while the US dollar and other safe havens may stay under selling interest. Now, as uh, for tonight, during the Asian session uh, Wednesday, we get New Zealand's uh, CPIs for the first quarter. The quarter over quarter rate is forecast to have risen to 0.7% from 0.5%, but this is likely to keep the year over year one unchanged at 1.4%. At last week's gathering, the RBNZ kept its uh, policy settings untouched, stay, staying prepared to lower its official cash rate further if required and adding that a prolonged period of time is most likely to pass before their objectives are met. An unchanged year-over-year -year inflation rate is likely to add more credence to the bank's view and is likely to allow officials to remain ready to cut interest rates if uh, deemed necessary. With that in mind, the QE may slide somewhat at the time of the release, but given that the RBNZ's uh, uh, view is already known, we don't expect the slide to last for long. Eventually, the currency may start uh, reacting to the broader market sentiment again, and given that we expect it to improve, the Kiwi may rebound and strengthen as well. The pound was the main gainer yesterday, with uh, no clear catalyst behind the rally. That said, traders of this currency are now likely to turn their attention to the UK CPIs uh, for March uh, due out uh, tomorrow during the early EU morning. 
The headline rate is expected to have risen to 0.7% from 0.4% year over year, while the core one is forecast to have ticked up to 1% from 0.9%. At the prior Bank of England gathering, policymakers kept their policy unchanged and noted that the recent plans for easing of COVID-related restrictions may be consistent with a slightly stronger outlook for consumption growth. However, they repeated that uh, the outlook for the economy remains unusually uncertain and if the inflation outlook weakens, they stand ready to take the necessary action. Thus, with both the headline and core CPI rates well below the bank's objective of 2%, we don't believe that officials will alter their stance uh, anytime soon. In our view, this is likely to keep a lead on uh, further gains in the pound and combined with a potential uh, slowdown in retail sales and the setback in, uh, in the PMIs on Friday, the currency may come back under uh, selling interest. As uh, for the rest of uh, today's events, during the early European morning today, we already got the UK employment report for February with the unemployment rate falling to 4.9% from 5%, while the forecast was for, a, for an uptick to 5.1%. The employment changed uh, uh, showed that the economy has lost uh, 73,000 jobs in the three months of February instead of uh, losing 150,000 as uh, the forecast uh, suggested. The only, the, the only other release worth mentioning on today's agenda is the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I have to let you know that there will be no daily market review for uh, the rest of the week. So goodbye. Have a great rest of the week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.